we're going to mark the mesial marginal ridge. Across, we'll mark the mesial transverse marginal ridge across to the lingual. Supplemental grooves, as we marked in red, are tributaries to the developmental grooves. The further away they get from the developmental groove, the more shallow they become. They go to, but never through, the marginal ridges and find a way out of there obliquely to the distal and to the buckle on all of the lower teeth. First molar, same thing. Now let's check ourselves. We look from the distal on the upper, and what do we see? Only green. If you see any orange at all, it will be on Stewart's supplemental ridge. If you've got a spheroidal arrangement, it makes it that much easier for it to separate. We make a left lateral movement, then a right lateral movement, and the health of the interdental papillae is directly dependent upon correct interproximal contacts, not only mesial distally, but also occlusal gingivally. On the additional parts of the tooth consisted from these four ridges. This in blue wax, the upper we had two oblique and three transverse and flow this groove, lifting up gently. This is the lingual developmental divide between the two lingual cusps. This is the same sequence of which we obtained the contacts as we were waxing. We did the marginal ridges before we did the triangular ridges and the lingual contour. In a class one occlusion, the mesial lingual cusp sits in the central fossa, the distal lingual, and the distal fossa. In a class two occlusion, the mesial lingual cusp would go to the mesial fossa, the distal lingual would be here in the central fossa. Now, the distal lingual is fine. It can work through here. It's non-working is through here. 